the excitement of Angels baseball on a new high-definition flat-screen TV from Howard. Official appliance and flat-screen superstores of the Angels. And we are back at the Big A. Not the Big A. We're looking at the Big A. We're back in Oakland where the Angels and the A's are getting set to play the second game in this three-game series. And just a couple of games left in the regular season. The A's will be on vacation. The Angels will be in the playoffs. And the lineup today, Figgins, Abreu, Guerrero. That's pretty normal up at the top. Then Juan Rivera batting cleanup today. Howie Kendrick, Eric Ibar, Matthews gets the start. So does Rob Quinlan today. And Jeff Mathis behind the plate. Going up against Dana Evelyn. David, you know, Dana doesn't have overpowering stuff. You can see that high ERA. The guy that really works on hitting his spots. Fastball settled in the upper 80s. Good changeup, slider, solid pickoff move to first base. So he does a good job of his fielding position. Defensively for the A's, they have Patterson, Davis, and Carson in the outfield. Bobby Crosby gets the start at third base today. Cliff Pennington, Mark Ellis, and Derek Barton, and Landon Powell catching the left-hander, Dana Evelyn. Roger Davis out there in center field covering a lot of ground. You can see how that outfield grass chewed up with the football games, but guys very quick. Figgy swings at the first pitch and hits a one-hopper to Ellis. One pitch, one out. Bobby Abreu stepping in now for the Angels. Figgy's 0 for 1 after one pitch in this game. Bobby Abreu. Bobby Abreu hitting 296. One ball, one strike to Abreu. Bobby last night when he stole his 30th base. Put himself in some select category with only the fifth player in Major League history to do it five different seasons in which he had 100 RBI and 30 stolen bases. In that group, Ty Cobb and Honus Wagner amongst the five. So Bobby, consistent as always, stealing the bags and driving in runs. Evelyn missing to him. And the count three and one to Abreu. The A's have quite a few pretty good young pitchers. Abreu lines it right down to third base. Crosby makes the play and there are two down. You know, I think when you look at this Oakland club, they're, they're building right now for the future. They got some good young arms. They're basically going with a six man rotation to make sure their pitch counts aren't too high. And they have some sluggers coming up through the minor league system. Going back to the days in which they had power hitters like the Consecos, the McGuire's. So they're going back. This year, more of a team that manufactures runs. Vlad Guerrero hitting third in the lineup today. Eveland, as you mentioned, not a power arm. He is one of their good young pitchers. Where he fits in, I guess they'll probably sort it out in spring training. That's a good thing about that, having the competition of some good young arms. Whoever wins out, maybe the other guys go down to the bullpen or back to AAA. Crosby again on a ground ball from Vladdy. And the Angels go quickly and quietly in the top of the first inning. Oakland coming to bat against Scott Kazmir.
is coming to bat. Rajay Davis is their leadoff man today. Then Derek Barton and Mark Ellis. Jack Cust is in the cleanup spot. Landon Powell, the catcher, then Bobby Crosby. The bottom third, Matt Carson, Eric Patterson, and the shortstop, Cliff Pennington, to face Kazmir. Scott Kazmir. Do you know the similar type of outing that you saw out of Jerry Weaver yesterday, trying to expand the pitch count, mid to upper 70s, maybe even touch around 85 pitches. Did that final tune-up. And work on that slider, to, to, that arm slot, to be able to have a good downward action on that pitch. Of course, the changeup and fastball rush in there at the mid-90s for Scott. Rajay Davis. This is the eighth time this season he has batted the leadoff for the A's. As Bob Guerin has had to move a lot of guys around this season. Davis fouls the first pitch back. And the guy on deck, Derek Barton, this will be only the second time he's hit second. One and one to Rajay Davis. Certainly has the speed to be a leadoff guy, doesn't he? Oh, uh, he definitely does with 41 stolen bases. Thing is, you want more of a, a contact hitter like a Sean Figgins, the guy that works the walk. He only has 29 walks on the season. On base percentage about 361, so not the typical guy you would see out of Oakland as far as a leadoff batter. One ball, two strikes to Davis. The Oakland A's next year. They're going to have to figure out how to win maybe 15 more games, Gooby. They have 75 wins right now. Well, I was talking to Billy Bean yesterday about this club. He's a GM for the A's. and says it's it's completely different than what it used to be. The Oakland, their offense is predicated around walks and home runs. Now you look at this club, a lot of stolen bases, hit and run situations. And, he, and he's joking around and said, well, now you guys, the Angels are hitting the home runs and walking on base percentage high. So just a complete reversal from the way the A's generally would play the game of baseball. But I think they're trying to get back to that mode, especially with the strong pitching they have now. Full count to Davis. You think about how long a baseball season is, and I'm sure Oakland feels like, you know, we can get just a little bit better and win those 90 games, 92, 93. Maybe that'll be good enough in this division. Well, Bob Guerin's got to feel pretty confident when he gets you know, a lead late in this game. This bullpen from Oakland is very strong. In the hole, the shortstop, Ivar is not going to be able to make a play there. Base hit for Rajay Davis. The Angels defensively today have Juan Rivera, Gary Matthews, and Bobby Abreu in the outfield. As Torrey Hunter gets the day off. Figgins, Ibar, Kendrick Quinlan in the infield. No Kendry Morales in there today. Jeff Mathis catching Scott Casimir. Boy, and Howie Kenners is playing some solid second base of late. Showing some great range going both to his left to and to his right. Turning double plays. Not the last few days trying to get healthy again. Back in the lineup for Mike. So should today. Barton takes a strike. He's hit twice, only sec uh, only two times, batting second in the lineup this year. Hits one off the hands right to Ibar, who drops it, steps on second, and throws to first. But gets a double play out of that because it was a line sure drive. He sure does, yeah. I don't know whether he dropped it on purpose or not, but if he did, that's quite a play. It looks like they're going to call it a catch. Jim Joyce, second base umpire. So, Eric thought he had one, uh, had, had snuck that one in there, but they're not going to give it to him. Second base. Well, that's a great try, though. Would have been a double play. Would have been pretty much the easiest of double plays. He's so smart. Eric Ibar is as far as the baseball game, the instincts. Good try on that one. 
Mark Ellis hitting third in the lineup today takes ball one. Rajay Davis over at first base. Since the All-Star break, Davis has more stolen bases than anybody in the league. 30 steals in the second half. Scott Casimir, very good mood at first. Uses that slide step, holds the baseball well, so it's tough to get a jump against Scott Casimir. One ball, one strike to Ellis. The thing to keep an eye on is Scott Casimir is getting his final prep work before the playoffs. You got Jacoby Ellsbury, a guy that steals a lot of bases for the Red Sox. If you keep him off, or if he gets on the base, you're going to have that move to be able to keep him close. Give Mathis or Napoli a chance to throw him out. One and two to Ellis with Casimir keeping Davis close at first base. There he goes, the pickoff throw to first, Quinlan throws to second, and Davis is out. Called him out there, that's a caught stealing there, one, three, six. See right there, just holding long enough. He's going on first movement, Davis is. The throw by Quinlan. It's already called out going by the base and then was able to tag him again as he slid by it. But good move again by Scott Casimir. We talked about that ability to be able to negate the running game. One ball, two strikes to Mark Ellis. Math is going out to say something to Casimir. With two out and nobody on in the bottom of the first inning. Not what you would call a huge crowd here today, Gooby, for the next to last game of the season. Round ball to third base. Sean Figgins makes the play, and the A's are out. Eric Ibar made a couple of good plays in the inning. No score after one. Suing perfection, Gooby Juan Rivera from last night. Boy, that was a perfect swing. And this is when he first hit that baseball, I thought he was going to the upper deck, but a cool error kept him from going too far, but he got over the fence anyhow. 25th home run of the season for Juan Rivera. And that is our Lexus pursuing perfection. And lo and behold, 
He's leading off. That's amazing. That was one of the towering fly balls. And you're right, when he hit it, it looked like it was long gone. And then it almost came down for an out. But it did get out. Career highs, 25 home run for Juan Rivera and RBI. Having a solid, solid season. Very good out in the outfield, too, with a strong arm. Juan bounces one into left field for a base hit. You talk about the cool night air frequently. <laughs> this probably is the ballpark where it's really evident. I mean, this looks like it should be a pretty good hitter's park, but at night, it really isn't. Well, when you when you look about pitching in a series here against the A's, whether it was before they closed it in here with the outfield seats or when it was open, that you wanted to pitch during the night because you had to crush the ball out of here, especially into the alleys. Down the line, it carried pretty well, but in the daytime, it's a whole different story here. Well, you look at that home run last night by Rivera. He hit that ball hard. It's only 362 to left center field power alley there, and it barely got out. So, obviously, in most stadiums, it would have been an out. Fly ball to center field off the bat of Howie Kendrick. Well, I remember, you know, for a while then when they had Seiko McGuire here, and they used to talk about that all the time, how... It probably cost them during the course of their career probably 30 or 40 home runs minimum right by playing in this yard at night because you can hit the ball to the right center the left center and just crush it and it would knock it out down the lines like i said it would, it would have pretty good carry daytime much better park to hit in as far as for home runs plus it has to cost you a dozen outs at least all of the foul territory here balls that would be in the stands are caught here Eric Ibar, the batter for the Angels. This is the time of year when it's also a football stadium, and it's very clear sitting up here to see what yard line everybody is on. The mound is right about at midfield. 50-yard line. And you can notice how the ground balls, when they hit, this grass because it's chewed up from the football games a little different read you got to look the baseball all the way in your glove whether you're in the infield or the outfield that gets by crosby and rolls into shallow left field eric ibar is aboard well right away you can see the difference when that ball is hit on the ground a little different height. Seven position. it's by bobby crosby at third base Number 24. Ball just stayed down on him, didn't come up. Ends up being the base hit for Ibar. Two on with one out, and Gary Matthews up there. One thing about the games Scott Casimir has pitched, the Angels have not scored him any runs. He has started five times. They've scored a total of eight runs. So he's probably over there thinking, let's go ahead and get these two in. <laughs> Definitely. As a starting pitch, you always like to be able to get some early run support. But the reality is, come playoff times, you're not going to get many situations where you get about a five or six run cushion early in the game. Off the glove of Powell and back to the backstop. The runners move up to second and third. He's been trying to, well, he wanted the fastball inside, but he's turned that over, that sinker, and it ran off the outside part of the plate and off Powell's glove. And missing location by that far. Difficult at times for a catcher to be able to catch it. Okay. One and one to Gary Matthews. Ellis catches that ball on the fly for the second out in the inning. Boy, tough one, too, for Gary Matthews Jr. Right in the infield back, giving up that run. It ends up being a line drive to second base. The thought process was good as far as hitting the ball in the middle part of the field to get a run across that line drive right at the second baseman. Last night, the Angels had runners at second and third and had kind of a Almost a busted play, but it turned out to be a double steal with Kendry Morales getting credit for a steal of home. And that was the first time with runners at second and third 
that there had been a double steal in baseball since 1992. Paul Molitor and Daryl Hamilton with the Brewers. There's a shot by Rob Quinlan into left field that knocks in one and now two as scoring from second base is Ibar. It's two to nothing Angels. Q with a couple of RBIs. As usual, Rob Quinlan getting a good at bat against a left-handed pitcher. It's a ball between short and third, and Dino Evil did not hesitate as far as sending I Ibar in from second base. Howard's replay will show. Well, cut fastball that didn't get in far enough on Rob Quinlan. He was able to get the bat out quickly and turn on that ball for a base hit. Patterson in left field covers a lot of ground, but not the strongest of arms. So Dino Evil did not hesitate sending Ivar home. Jeff Mathis up there now for the Angels. Rob Quinlan, a big two-out hit. Oh and one to Mathis. Jeff hitting two eleven. He taps one to shortstop. Pennington underhands to second for the fourth, and the inning is over. But Rob Quinlan gets the big hit. Two to nothing, Angels. to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. See what's new at SCFordDealers.com and by Jack in the Box where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. Well, the Angels have already celebrated their American League Western Division title. The playoffs begin next week. The Angels and the Red Sox the regular season playing out here in Oakland before the Angels today and tomorrow. Jack Cust, the A's DH, to face Scott Casimir with the shift on in the infield for Cust. Well, Figgins is way over. If Cust were to roll one down the third base line, it'd be a, a certain base hit, but I don't think he's thinking that way. No, I don't think he's going to lay down a bunt. But again, when you pitch a batter with this type of shift on so far to the outside corner, every once in a while they'll miss hit a ball and will go down that third base side. Two and one to Jack Cust. Tell you what, his slider's been pretty good for Scott Casimir early in this game. Good break to that pitch, getting on top of it. The wrist turn, such an important pitch for Scott Casimir. 
just a few years ago led the American League in strikeouts. See that move right there, Roy? He slapped his leg because he didn't get on top of that slider on that particular pitch. The elbow dropped and the pitch ended up being elevated. And he's gone to a full count, three and two to Cust. The Oakland A's have had a decent second half, but right now they're in the midst of a five game losing streak. Broken back, rolled to Figgins. And Sean plays it like the shortstop he was when he came up. Makes a good play for the out. Nice pick, too, by Rob Quinlan at first base. Not only is Sean Figgins having to field that ball in that shortstop Lesson. position, he's got to make that throw on the run. Breaks the bat, shatters it. Nice play on the run, throw over. A great pick by Rob Quinlan at first base. See right there, thrown away from the base. Still way able to pick it. One out, Landon Powell. Backup catcher for the A's, takes strike one. Hitting 235, he's hit seven home runs. One ball, one strike to Landon Powell. Took the outside pitch and fouled it away for strike two. Landon Powell's been tough on the Angels. Just three games, but he's had some success. Definitely a guy that likes to pitch out over the plate, susceptible to pitches inside. Third time the A's have had a five game losing streak this year. They've not lost more than that in a row. There's a high pop fly foul. But they have stopped hitting during this streak. As a team, during the five games, they're hitting 210. Look at that bat. Can't even play that in stickball after that bat was shattered like that. Mm -mm. Strike three swinging. First strike out for Casimir. Fans, the Angels will be in Tempe, Arizona for spring training before you know it. The 2010 Angels spring training package is available. You can get great tickets, hotel accommodations, merchandise, and an exclusive barbecue with an appearance by a member of the Angels coaching staff or spring training roster. There's a shot into left center field that's going to be handled by Gary Matthews that retires Bobby Crosby on one pitch the A's are out in the second
Well, they're still beating the drum in Oakland with a couple of games left. Just not right now. <laughs> I think they're waiting. Time for a break. Top of the third, top of the order for the Angels, Sean Figgins. Grounded out to second his first time up. Been kind of interesting following Figgins battle to hit 300 this year. It seems to change almost every at bat. Right now he's at 299 after grounding out his first time up. If he's hitting 299 at the start of the day tomorrow and Sosha does not have him in the starting lineup. I'm gonna bet you Figgy goes to Mike and says, let me at least get in that bat. See if I can get that hit. Like that 300 batting average sounds so much better than 299. And right now he's 0 for 2 with a couple of ground balls today. Number 53. That'll bring up Bobby Abreu. Bobby would have to have a pretty big couple of days. He's at 296. Again, it's all about getting your at bats in right now, the timing at the plate for the hitters. So she's going to get him enough at bats. That way they're comfortable going into the postseason. Owen 1 2 Abreu. Figgy is at 298 right now, Gibby. Just a couple hits. Before the end of the season, we'll get him over that, right at that 300 mark. You know, you always set goals every season as far as what you want to hit. I mean, obviously, when you're at the top at run scored and walks, you've done exactly what you want to do, but you also want to get that 300 mark, which is magical for a hitter. Crosby. Cutting in front of Pennington makes the play to retire Abreu. Well, you look at the Angels' overall record, 95 and 65. Consider what they've been through this season, going through 14 different starting pitches. You had Torrey Hunter out for a while. You had Vlad out a couple times during the season. And to put up those type of numbers, Mike Sosha, when you think about what he's accomplished, first manager in Major League history to, to guide his team to the playoffs, Six times in his first ten years of managing. That's that's impressive. You think about it, no one else has ever done that. Manager of the year, in a lot of people's opinions, I think we would feel that way, and we'll see if he wins that award this year. Mike doesn't really talk about it much, although he's been asked about it a little bit lately. He always deflects any kind of praise to his coaching staff and his players. It's like when there's criticism or, or, or a bad streak for the team, he's a guy that it's always going to be up big shoulders. He's going to absorb that, not let the team worry about that. That's why they're focused. I think it's why this team this year going into the postseason against the Red Sox is much more confident than it has been in the years past. It's the feel you get when you talk to the guys. They have the Red Sox coming to Anaheim. Behind third, Crosby with a long throw gets Vladdy. Three ground ball outs, sets the Angels down in order.
Scott Casimir. Mike Sosha has yet to release his postseason roster. He may do it tomorrow, Gabit. Is this what you think? No, I just want to, certainly from the, the pitching side of it, from the starters, John Lackey game one, Jerry Weaver game two, Casimir three, and Saunders four with the bullpen. With Urban moving down there, Fuentes, Jepson at eighth inning, Jason Bolger, Matt Palmer, Darren Oliver, Mr. Steady as far as that bullpen. I think they're going to go with 10 pitchers. I don't think the need is there for going with 11 guys in a short series like that, especially with that flexibility of Urban Santana going down to the bullpen. And then, of course, for the roster, for the position players, you have your outfitters at Hunter Rivera, Bray. That's an easy thing, right? Gary Matthews Jr. has done a solid job pitching. I think Reggie Willis, his ability to be able to bunt, steal bag. Vlad the H and Kenry, obviously. Howie Kenry's been very good. Ivar Figgins, Astoris, Rob Quillen, the ability. They need somebody who can play a little first base just in case in that series. Mike Napoli, Jeff Matheson, Bobby Wilson, the third catcher, allows at times, if they need, they either pinch shift for Mathis or decide at some point maybe Napoli if he's on fire to be able to DH if something's going on with Vlad. So that flexibility of an extra bat and the third catcher, I think, is what Mike Socha is going to go with. So the two interesting picks there would be Bobby Wilson and Reggie Willits on the postseason roster. Flexibility. And I think Bobby Wilson, very solid defense. We've seen him play in that one game in New York, that makeup game, came in defensively. And, of course, a couple of his games at Fenway. So the pressure was already put on him, and he responded well. Matt Carson up there at the plate for Oakland. Here in the bottom of the third inning. Two and two. Carson hitting in the number eight spot. Eric Patterson will be next. Then back to the top of the order. And Rajay Davis for the A's in this third inning. Got him looking. Wow, that was a good paint on the outside corner for Scott Kazimer. He's throwing a couple of solid pitches. That slider that he got Landon Powell with. And, of course, this fastball to get Carson on the outside corner. Our replay shows the location. Perfect target set. By Mathis on the outside corner, hits the spot, gets the punch out. Two strikeouts for Kaz, who set his career high in strikeouts against Oakland a couple of years ago. It was 13 at Tropicana Field. 0-1 to Eric Patterson. One ball, one strike to the A's left fielder. Batting number nine on the batting order for Bob Guerin today. One and two. I see right now for Scott Kazmir, we talked about getting that good feel for that slider going. He's thrown a couple really good ones today. And count right now one, two, where you can expand it and throw that slider. And he gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. That's the pitch you were looking for, Gooby. Boy, that was perfectly located. You see Jeff Mathis so good at what he wanted him to do on that pitch. He's setting his target down by the ground, head of the count one, two, want to get that slider in that position. Good, good tilt on that slider at the very end. You can see right here Patterson going out in front. Once you make that commitment, that front hit open up, no chance against it. But that's the kind of sharp slider that Mike Butcher's been trying to look for to get consistently out of Scott Casimir. Three strikeouts in the ball game for Kaz. Mike Butcher has to be happy with this. You, you said they'd be happy if he uh, had an outing similar to what Weaver had yesterday, and so far he has. And the thing with yesterday with Jerry, we talked about the increased velocity on his fastball, and he had a sharp fastball, 92 mile an hour out of Weaver. And today, Kazmir, even talking to Mike Butcher just a couple days ago about Scott. And that ability to be able to get that consistent arm slot for that slide. You can see right there, they're talking about that front shoulder staying in. They have that ability to get on top and snap that slider off. Snap that one off just a little bit too much. Well, you know, you go for that little league mount of 46 feet. That would have been a good one. <laughs> but you see Ron Renicky pointing to Mike Butcher about that front shoulder, how important that is not only for a hitter, but particularly for a pitcher. 
work, but then Figgins charging and trying to barehand it, but couldn't quite come up with it. That should go as an infield single. Pennington runs very well. That's the only play you're going to be able to make for Sean Figgins coming in on the bare hand. Tough play. Pennington runs well. Do or die. Ends up being a base hit. Infield. That's the second hit for the A's today. And they'll bring up the leadoff man, Rajay Davis. Owen one to Davis. Just one game in the American League that is a day game today. The Twins and the Royals will be battling it out. The Twins trying to stay alive. That race has become quite a race between Minnesota and Detroit. Ground ball in the hole. It's short. Ibar gets it to second quickly, and it's a good play by Eric to take care of the A's in the third inning. Still two to nothing, Angels. For the Aflac trivia question today, who was the only Angel player to hit two home runs in their first postseason series? That was back in 1979. Hmm, that's a tough one. Bobby Gritch? I would just be guessing. It's as good a guess as any, though, I think. Juan Rivera. Leads off the fourth inning for the Angels against Dana Eveland. Eveland had a 1 2 3 inning in the first. He also had one in the third. But in between in the second, he gave up a couple of runs and three hits. Rivera had a hit in that second inning. Two balls, no strikes to Juan Rivera. On the ground wide of third, past Crosby, Pennington. Whoa, almost got him. That would have been an unbelievable play by Pennington. You talk about as close as the plays you're going to see. Man, that was an unbelievable amount of range for Pennington to be able to make this play fielding the ball that way you see it's going to be a backhand if he's able to feel that in the front part of his body make the strong throw across Juan Rivera beat it out by less than a half a step but what a play by Pennington great stretch too by Barton Dana Evelyn wanted that out that's about as good as he can get right there without getting an out Ali Kendrick up there for the Angels. Great range for Pennington at shortstop. Again, most guys will backhand and make that throw. 
He's able to feel that in the middle part of his body and still make a strong throw falling away from the first base bag. 2-0 the count to Howie Kendrick. Three zero to Howie. Dana Eveland has had eight previous starts this year, and has gone as many as six innings just once. That was against the Angels back in April. It's three and one here to Kendrick. Who grounds one to Pennington. And they get the double play. Nice turn by Mark Ellis at second base. 6-4-3. Well, that was quick as Howie runs very fast down the line. Needed that quick turn. Be able to get that double play. Pennington with a good feed, too. Quick. Also able to catch and throw. And avoid to uh, slide into second base by Juan Rivera. Two gone on the top of the fourth. Eric Ibar at the plate. He bunts foul. Tomorrow, Edgar Gonzalez starts for Oakland against Joe Saunders. But Bob Guerin has already said, you're going to see a lot of our bullpen tomorrow. He's planning to use a lot of pitchers. Last game of the season. Well, that's always tough, too, is, is hitters. It's always difficult. That's why you see it in the All-Star games, not a lot of run score when you have different looks pretty much every inning. Most hitters like to be able to see a, bat, a pitcher once or twice or three times before they get a good feel. But when you have a different guy out every inning, it's going to be tough. One and two to Eric Ibar. And he whacks one through the right side for a base hit. Two hits in the inning for the Angels. Number 24, Gary, Gary Matthews at the plate. Matthews lined out to second base his only time up today. You know, over the years, you mentioned how difficult that is. Over the years, we've seen no hitters, perfect game on the last day of the season. I think it's partly because of that. Mike went through a perfect game for yeah. the Angels. Different Back guys, in Texas. Different guys in the lineup, and obviously, although they would never admit it, maybe some players thinking about what time their flight home leaves. There's a line drive hit for Matthews into left center field. Here comes Ibar around third, heading to the plate, and he will score from first base. Boy, how quick is Eric Ibar? Well, he got around those bases in a hurry, didn't he? You know, not only is he fast, but he does a tremendous job of cutting the corners of the bases to be able to shorten down that distance between each base and getting home. But that's another nice swing for Gary Matthews Jr. You can see Ibar right here just turning around that corner. Look at the jump. Sees it, recognize that ball is going to get in the alley. Cuts around that corner of the base, picks it up, gets around that corner again, scores so easily. Exceptionally fast and quick for Ibar. And that gives Gary Matthews nine runs batted in in his last nine games. Quinlan, the batter now. Rob drove in the first two runs back in the second inning. And there's a line shot. Matthews had to duck down to get underneath that one. He's still going to come to the plate and score. Quinlan goes for two and gets it. Q has three runs batted in in the game. And it's four to nothing, Angels. 
Well, the offense just continues to roll. Mickey Hatch has got to be extremely happy with this club. The all-time record as far as runs scored, not slowing down a bit. <laughs> Gary has to get out of the way of that line drive. Right by him. Able to score easily, though, but another nice at bat for Rob Quinlan. You know, able to send him home, no problems. Q with his fifth double and three runs batted in on the day. Good day for Rob Quinlan, who goes from 11 RBIs to 14 in the first four innings of this ballgame. Now batting, number five, Jeff Mathis. Jeff Mathis steps in now. to Mathis. The Angels have had five batters come to the plate this inning. Four of them have hits, but there was a double play mixed in there. As we talk about the playoff roster, speculate who's going to be on that 25-man roster. Then there's a decision to make who's going to be the starting catcher. You have two very good friends, both solid as far as defense. Napoli a little more power, obviously, than Mathis. Tough decisions for Mike Sosha, but Jeff Mathis and John Lackey have worked extremely well together. Here raising the two. Two is when John Lackey's on the hill and Mathis is catching him, so it's a tough decision to make there also. Two balls, two strikes to Jeff Mathis. Chopper hit to shortstop. Pennington plays the second hop and throws Jeff out. But Rob Quinlan drives in another run. The Angels score two and they lead four to nothing. Black answer who was the only angel player to hit two home runs in their first postseason series in 1979 disco Dan Ford got Jim Palmer and then he got Mike Flanagan pretty impressive a couple big home runs against some solid solid pitcher Hall of Famer and Jim Palmer Flanagan could turn over that fastball and change up as good as anybody <laughs> that was 30 years ago. That's unreal. Hard to believe, isn't it? Disco Dan Ford. What an awesome dude. Derek Barton takes strike one for the A's, leading off the bottom of the fourth. Hey. 
No balls, two strikes to Barton. So far, so good for Kazmir Gooby. I think it's impressive, not only the velocity on the fastball, location is mechanics, fluid, but it's that snap on the slider. The important pitch for him here. See right here, that proper balance over the pitching rubber. Good hip turn, able to get out in the front leg, balance, bend the back. Keep the head still as you deliver the pitch. It goes two and two to Barton. You can see that career batting average versus lefties, 222. Even righties haven't had a whole lot of success at 252, but more home runs clearly from the right side as compared to the left. Martin's aboard to start the fourth inning. And the big thing with Scott Casimir going against the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Great numbers, 13 starts. He's got six wins there. ERA barely over three. And only five home runs allowed in that many Appearances that's pretty solid considering you got that green monster there Fenway not too far away In my opinion seems to be about five feet away from the plate <laughs> <laughs> Mark Ellis takes one outside well, We've talked about how sometimes managers will shy away from going in there with back-to-back left-handers, but so Obviously doesn't feel that way the way Casimir and Saunders are pitching And the reality is both of those guys have had success at Fenway and you look at overall career numbers for John Lackey and even Jared Weaver in Fenway Park Not as good as they would be if they're pitching at the Big A So Mike Sosha has set it up exactly where he wants it both Lackey and Weaver at home with the Big A and those two lefties going into Fenway where they've had very good success Two balls and one strike to Mark Ellis. Interesting thing here for Scott Casimir, whether they did this or not in Tampa. The first base for the Angels, whether it be Rob Quinlan or Kenny Morales, play off the base as far as that pickoff, and then they go back. He's most like times when you see, off. yeah, most times you'll see a, a, on that situation the first base will be right on the base for the pickoff, but. Rob Quillen and Kenny Morales with a lefty, whether it be Joe Saunders or Scott Casimir, know when they lift the leg up, they'll go back towards first, but still in this position they're at, they can feel that ground ball and be able to turn a double play. Much easier than they would be jumping off the base. Ellis yanks it foul into the seats. Two balls, two strikes to Mark Ellis. On the ground to Ibar, who flips it to Kendrick, who gets it to Quinlan for a double play. Six four three behind Casimir. Great turn on this one, right? Good feed flip. Like an option in football by Eric Ibar. Nice turn though by Howie. Howie's doing an excellent job at second base as far as getting himself in position to make that throw, even though you got the runner right on top of him because of that little hesitation by Ibar with that last second bad hop at him. Two outs, the shift is back on for Jack Cust. Last time up, he grounded out to the third baseman, who would basically be the shortstop with this 
shift on. Figgy made the play. One and one to Jack Cust. High pop fly again. It's on the left side. And Figgy takes care of it again. Oakland retired in the fourth, trailing the Angels 4-0. Kazmir have the A's shut down through four innings, four to nothing. Fans, the Angels are the American League West champs. Now you have the opportunity to receive priority in purchasing postseason tickets. Subscribe to the AngelsBaseball.com Insider prior to the deadlines on AngelsBaseball.com and you'll be given priority to order postseason tickets for select Angel playoff games. To ensure your postseason ticket priority, Visit angelsbaseball.com. Right after the game, that is. Some Angel fans here up in Oakland. Actually, there's a lot of Angel fans up here in Oakland. A lot of SoCal people up in Oakland. They got, saw a number at the hotel, USC fans, too. Yes. <laughs> UCLA is playing also. And the USC football fans, Angel fans, they've invaded Northern California. Sean Figgins leading off the top of the fifth for the Angels. Figgy rolls one to second base. So Sean 0 for 3 today. Starting to look like maybe a bit of a long shot to get that average back up to 300. Bobby Abreu. Yeah, that's the thing when you're pressing you want to get ahead instead of just going back to your normal approach You know that, that makes it more difficult because then all of a sudden you're you're expanding your zone As compared to center in a spot you can drive it hard you think he's thinking about it to that point Where he could possibly even be pressing a little bit to try and hit 300 Well knowing the way Sean figured is he's very competitive I mean, he's put up some outstanding numbers, but yeah, I mean you always set personal goals. You want to hit that 300 He's shaking his head. He's He's at 298 after an 0 for 3 today, but it's obviously a little bit lower 298 than it was after 0 for 2 I mean, Why would you not be thinking I mean you have to be when you're a guy that's had a lot of success Throughout your career and this season you want to be able to finish it off with that 300 mark. No doubt about it. Well, he'll get at least one more at bat, assuming he stays in the game. But that's not a sure thing in these games, these last couple of games. Abreu grounds one to Ellis. Now Dana Evelyn has 10 ground ball outs now. And that's what he's trying to do out there. And obviously not a power pitcher. If he got it, spots the fastball, will throw that slider and use his changeup. He pitched the contact. If he's a guy to think about trying to strike people out. He's not going to be successful. John Malone warming up in the bullpen for the A's. 
Vlad Guerrero hits a line drive, and that one's right down the left field line into the corner. Vladdy turns and goes for two, and he'll make it. Two out double for Vlad Guerrero. We talk about a quick swing. Vlad turns on that pitch. Well, able to tuck his hands in so well and keep it fair. I've never seen anybody consistently keep that ball fair when it's off the inside part of the plate more than Vlad has done. The A's are going to make the pitching change here in the fifth inning. And we'll be right back to Oakland. Angels Baseball is brought to you by BeWaterWise.com. A message from the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California and the family of Southern California Water Agencies. Back here in Oakland, the Angels leading the A's 4 to nothing. I think the fellows would like to have a couple more of those celebrations. Before they go home for the offseason. No question. Celebrating against the Red Sox, whoever they would play in the ALCS, and of course the World Series, where they would have the home field advantage. Pinch runner at second base, so Vladdy's out of the ball game. Ryan Buddy runs for him. John Malone making his sixth appearance. Juan Rivera at the plate, 1 0. The Angels are two for four today with runners in scoring position. Alone, like most pitchers coming out of that bullpen, has got a pretty good fastball, 88 to 93. You saw that slider there. It also has a curveball. They definitely have a lot of depth out of their bullpen. Just off the plate with that one. And that allows you as a manager, and Bob Guerin has that flexibility of having competition at a spring training next year in Arizona to see who's going to be able to solidify that bullpen even more so. You shorten up the game, have a better chance to win once you get that lead at some point. Crosby comes up with it, gets up and throws out Rivera. Nice play by the Oakland third baseman Bobby Crosby. That ends the inning. Boy, a lot of range for Crosby diving. Juan trying to hit that spot once again for the third time, but this time unsuccessful. The play is made.
January 22nd through the 25th. We'll be heading south to Baja, Mexico. This is an exclusive offer from AAA Travel. Players and coaches are scheduled to appear, so call your AAA Travel agent at 888-874-7222 and book your Angel fan crew. The Angels have made some changes here. Reggie Willits stays in the game playing left field. Chris Pettit is in the game now. He's playing right field. Figgins is out of the ball game, and Brandon Wood takes over at third. Bottom of the fifth inning. Casimir might be going into his final inning of work here. Landon Powell leads off for Oakland. Kazmir had 61 pitches so far here to start off the fifth. Very effective. So if he goes one more inning, he'll be probably pretty close to 80. And that's about what they wanted out of him today, isn't it? Well, there's, there's no doubt this is what they want. They want to see him make his pitches, have better command with his slider, still have that good velocity on the fastball, and maintain his mechanics from pitch to pitch. That was Matt Palmer warming up down there for the Angels. Powell struck out his first time up. Last time, Casimir got him out on that slider down and in. Similar situation, a 1-2 count. Down and in slider again. He just didn't go after it this time. Good spot, though. You know, you're ahead of the count. You can afford to expand that strike zone with that pitch, but that was a sharp slider. It's good to see that out of Scott Casimir in this game. Fly ball, left field, Reggie Willits gets into the uh, defensive mix right away and makes the catch. Kaz has given up just two hits today, Gooby. Oh, he, he just has that look like Jared had last night. This is the look of not only the confidence, but the re, you know that he's relaxed, he's hitting his spots. You can pitch so much better when you're not forcing the issue, just let your mechanics take you through it. Oh, and one to Bobby Crosby. No balls, two strikes. Mike, put your nose, Scott Casimir, from his days back in Tampa. So he can sense when his mechanics are good, when he's throwing the ball well, when he's confident. And there's a shot for Crosby down the line into the corner. He'll get a double out of that third hit of the game for Oakland. And even in between innings, the two were talking to each other, and Mike Butcher was, you know, just making a sign about how to get on top of some pitches. And there was a pitch right there that he didn't get on top of. He elevated that enough for Crosby to have a quicker bat and be able to drive that down the left field line for a double. But it's all about getting, staying on top with your elbow and your shoulder to be able to work downhill as a pitcher. And those two have a very good relationship. Matt Carson for the A's. Carson struck out in the third inning. One ball, one strike. And a pop fly to second base. Kendrick handles it. Two down. Well, you're talking about getting in someone's kitchen on that pitch. Has me with a lively fastball today. Very sharp slider. Changeups been very good. The circle changeup he's been throwing. Eric Patterson steps in now.
Patterson struck out first time up. Kazmir jumps ahead of Patterson, 0 and 2. Scott Kazmir about to make his 74th pitch of the ball game, so he's right on target in his playoff tune-up here today. Here are the numbers for Kazmir. Last year he was with Tampa Bay. And face the Red Sox. Impressive thing is that in that game five, a must win situation, threw exceptionally well. Six shutout innings. Well, you know, if the Angels don't sweep the Red Sox at home the first two games, he'll definitely be in a must win situation in game three at Fenway. That's when you fall back in an experience in the run he made last year with the Tampa Bay Rays getting to that World Series. Fly ball center field by Patterson. Matthews makes the play, and that's probably it for Casimir. We'll find out for sure in the sixth. But a good outing here. Five shutout innings. Sessie for that slide. Look where that starts. Middle part of the plate. And then ends up down and in and getting the strikeout against Powell. That's nasty slider here. And once again, starts middle part of the plate. Ends up on the off the outside corner in the dirt. Electric slider for Scott Casimir today. That is a Coors Light freeze game brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Sixth inning in Oakland. Howie Kendrick leading off. Hits a liner into right field. Hanging up there for Carson. One pitch, one out in the sixth. It looks like Scott Casimir probably finished after five innings today. Outstanding. I think it, for Mike Sosha, you can't write that script any better. The last two starts for him is starters of Jerry Weaver and Scott Casimir getting some good work, ironed out some mechanical issues, hit their spots. Five shutout innings, both of them, last two times out. So the perfect tune-ups for the playoffs, huh? Especially when we talked Weaver yesterday, increased velocity, great curveball changeup. Today for Scott Casimir, the fastball's still been there, the changeup, but above all, the slider, very, very sharp today. Ibar batting for the Angels. When you look ahead to that Red Sox, you got Big Poppy, susceptible to a left-hander slider. You got Kobe Ellsbury, same thing. J.D. Drew if he's in that game. 
So the ability to be able to throw that slider and stay on top with that and repeat that a number of times during a pitch sequence could be very effective. 3-0 and to Eric Ibar. Good fastball for a strike. Dana Eveland went four and two thirds today. Now John Malone in there. It's amazing how different it is for these two teams. The Angels, if their mind is wandering, it's because the playoffs are starting in a few days. The Oakland A's will come here tomorrow knowing the season is over after tomorrow's game. Broken bat hit there for Ibar. Really, it's not a whole lot of fun when you're on that Oakland side of it because there's a number of guys that will not Number be your 24, teammate next year. If you don't play well, there's going to be movement in your organization. So these guys you might end up facing and end up being sitting next year right now. Lone tried to get, didn't even notice that bat coming right back at him, hit him in the foot. What are you talking about? Shatter the bat. Focusing on the baseball. Back came right by him. Wasn't real happy about giving up a hit with a broken bat. <laughs> Gary Matthews takes ball one. The big thing is in this ball game. Yes, it's nice to have the lead four nothing like the Angels are, but it's the outing by Scott Casimir and that ability to be able to get that slider in the proper arm slot and be effective and be consistent with it was certainly something that Mike Butcher and Mike Sosa definitely have to be happy about. One and zero to Gary Matthews. See how he's talking about Mike, you know, top of that pitch, talking. See right on top about that snap of the slide. It's exactly the pitch that Scott Casimir when he first came up. Not that he's been around for a long, long time. Still young, but that slider was devastating. In comparison between that kind of slider and Ron Guidry. Wasn't that far off, and then he's kind of went away from that. More of a fastball changeup guy, but that slider, important pitch, and had a great one today. That's a pretty good name to be compared to right there. Louisiana Lightning, Ron Guidry. Well, I'll tell you what, this watching that slider over the times, seeing him from the bench, Guidry, that, that slider comparison to a Steve Carlin type slider where you think you're you're on top of it, you got to read for it, then boom, the bottom drops out, you miss it by three feet. Great effort. Three strikeouts in that five and he's only one walk. So the pitch count was very manageable too for Casimir, a guy that always has piled up the pitches in a short period of time. There's one line down toward the bullpen by Matthews. Two balls, two strikes to Gary. Casimir stands to win it if the Angels hold on. A chance to be a 10 game winner this year if he can hold on for this lead. Two balls, two strikes to Matthews. Another ground ball done into the bullpen area where Palmer is getting ready to come in. It's worked out well too for Scott Casimir. You mentioned Palmer coming in, been an outstanding addition to this club. Casimir coming into the game as an angel in the ERA at 2.01, so now under two. Back to work with Mike Butcher, the familiarity with a pitching coach you've had when you were early on in your career and being successful when he's with the Rays. This is the fact you get out of pitching at the Tropicana Field, which is definitely a hitter's yard. Gary Matthews goes down swinging. Two out in the sixth. Rob Quinlan's had a big day today, getting a chance to start at first base. Q has gone two for two with three runs batted in.
between Ibar and Quinlan combined five for five. Ibar's on base now. Quinlan single to drive in two in the second, and his base hit scored another run in the fourth. One and zero to Q. Sosha, Renicky, Butcher, standing together. Well, they got to be excited too. Get one more game out of the way tomorrow, and all of a sudden the preparation for the postseason becomes into play. From your workouts on through. Finding out exactly which day you're going to play tomorrow. They'll find out whether they play Wednesday or Thursday. More than likely, they're going to start the first game on Thursday at the Big A. Well, I think they'll already be thinking about it on the short flight home from Oakland. Play Thursday, Friday. John Lester, all indication are John Lester is going to get the baseball game one. Josh Beckett, game two. Then we'll see game three. Buckholtz maybe. Dice K. Wakefield more than likely if he if he's going to be in the rotation will be game four. Well, it's gonna be a lot of fun. That should be a, 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 an epic series. One and two to Q. Yeah, the Angels go in with a little chip on their shoulders, having known the Red Sox have blasted them out the last couple of years. And, you know, the Red Sox, their fans and their players are pretty confident. They don't even think about what success the Angels have had against them in the regular season. You know, the, the whole talk is, well, you can't beat us in the postseason. So, yes, the Angels are going to have that edge going. And, and I firmly believe with the depth of their rotation and the strength of their starting rotation and their everyday lineup with the influence of Bobby Abreu, they have to feel... But this is their year to be able to advance by the Red Sox. Again, it's all coming down to how they execute, make the plays in the field. Get that situational hit. Get that big RBI when you need to. And, of course, a few extra base hits would help. Henry Morales has had a full year under his belt. And 79 extra base hits for him this season. That's what they need. He had a lot of singles last year, not a lot of power production outside of, besides that Mike Napoli was the only guy that hit the ball out of the ballpark. They need some other guys like a Kenny Morales and Torrey Hunter, Vlad, hit the ball out of the yard. Quinlan strikes out this time. Bottom of the sixth coming up, but the Angels shutting the A's out.
happening in Oakland. Matt Palmer takes over for the Angels. What a dream season Palmer has had going 11 and 2 as an Angel. 9 and 1 as a starter. ERA just at 4. And when you think about it, if you're Matt Palmer, you're coming in this the camp. Thought process, well, let me just try to show some. Maybe somebody else could use me down the road. Lo and behold, you're 11 and 2 going on into the postseason and a prominent role coming out of that bullpen for Mike Socia on this playoff roster. So, boy, talk about living a dream. And this is certainly the case with Matt Palmer. Here's another one of those number situations. His earned run average is four. You have a good inning here, and it's under four. Makes a difference in the guy's mind, that's for sure. Cliff Pennington leading off for Oakland. His ability to be able to sink the fastball, cut the fastball, generally staying around 87, 89. Good slow curveball and a changeup, different arm angles. One ball, one strike to Pennington. Good fastball. One and two. Things couldn't have worked out much better for the Angels as far as the pitchers are concerned, Gooby, in this series. Weaver yesterday, Casimir today. Yesterday it just so happened that they needed Brian Fuentes in a save situation, so they should be set for the playoffs. Well, it's almost as if Mike Sosha came with a script up here at Oakland. It's <laughs> been, been perfect for him. 77 pitches yesterday for Jerry Weaver in five shutout innings. You mentioned Fuentes getting a chance to get in there in a save spot, so he gets his work in a, in a key situation for him. And then today, Scott Casimir goes five shot innings, so 76 pitches. You mentioned a few moments ago the Red Sox have that confident, well, you haven't beaten us in the playoffs attitude. And these are the guys right here that will do it for Boston. And they probably have that feeling that, hey, they can't beat us. Well, Jason Bay's going to get a lot of votes for AL MVP with that 117 RBI. Kevin Euclid's great approach to the plate every single time. Josh Beckett, former MVP of the World Series for the Florida Marlins. you got John Lester, who was outstanding last year in the postseason against the Angels. And, of course, everybody's favorite Red Sox going against the Angels, Jonathan Papelbon. Always like when he comes out there. <laughs> Papelbon has been like bad news in a pickup truck when he comes in. And at one point, he had not given up a run until this year in his career earned run average at zero against the Angels. Finally gave up a run. But you look at Papelbon right now, there is some questions as far as his velocity on this fastball. He's a guy that generally rushes 95 to 97, but he's been settling around 93, 94, which is still very good, but not the same type of fastball. So you take that away. He's been throwing a few more sliders and split fingers watching a number of their games the Red Sox have played. So he's not an automatic. Although I'm sure the Angels would prefer him not getting in any games except for maybe getting some work in. <laughs> Especially these Angel fans think, okay, Jonathan Papelbein's a good guy. Let's keep down in the bullpen. Not in any games. <laughs> if he comes in, you know you're not in a good situation. <laughs> then you mix in Billy Wagner who's throwing... Pretty, pretty hard considering he went through that elbow surgery as a member of the Mets. Now they picked him up at the trade deadline, so he's a guy that could throw up there 96. So it's definitely want to avoid the back end of their bullpen for the Red Sox. It's very effective. One and two here to Rajay Davis. Well, they saw some fans there. The atmosphere at the Big A Thursday night is going to be a lot different than it is here today. All of a sudden, it's going to be like somebody flipped a switch somewhere. I just had that feeling it's going to be 
louder than any time we've seen in a long time. Maybe similar to back in that 0 2 season when they made that magical run to the World Series. You're going to need that support. Davis goes down swinging. Palmer gets the strikeout. Davis had a couple real bad swings and some pitches on the outside part of the plate against Matt Palmer. First, a late swing on a fastball, then on this slider off the outside corner. Man, that was nasty. You see, just trying to fight that one off. No chance for Davis. One out, Derek Barton at the plate. One ball, one strike to Barton. The Angels had the A's shut out until the ninth inning last night, and they have them shut down again here today so far. Barton pulls that one foul down into the bullpen. One and two. Remember the first time through here this year, Gooby, and Oakland had Giambi, they had Holiday in left field, they had Nomar, and they thought maybe we have a shot this year, but and it has, hasn't worked out. And Orlando Cabrera at shortstop. I right. mean, this team, look, yep. I mean, when you think about where they were the year before, pitched very well at the top of the American League at ERA, but they didn't score any runs, and they made all those additions. They didn't have to give up a lot to get those players. They signed a number of them at relatively good prices, and yet. It fell apart for him. Nobody was swinging the bat well. Matt Holliday didn't perform, and then he was shipped over to St. Louis, in which he's taken off, having him and Albert Pools in the lineup together. Of course, Orlando Cabrera's over there trying to get the Twins into the playoffs. With the runner going, that's a strike. Out at second base. Strike him out, throw him out, double play, ends the inning. After six innings, four to nothing, Angels. Well, how quick was that catch and throw once again? Matt, look at that. Position to catch, fire it in there, second base. Good scoop by Ibar, makes the play. That's a double play.
certainly be able to call that pitch, frame it, get the strikeout, but also catch and throw how quick his release has been this season. Look how quick. Out of the glove. Firm throw in the second. And a good scoop by Ibar, and he plies the tag. Get the strike him out, throw him out. Nice job getting that tag right there. Gets him on the back before the hand is in on the base. And Mathis leads off the seventh inning for the Angels. Jeff sold for two with a couple of ground ball outs today. Brad Ziegler, the new pitcher for the Oakland A's. Side armor. He's had a pretty good year out of their bullpen. Almost got Mathis there, just a little bit inside. One ball, two strikes. Third pitcher in the ball game for Oakland today. You know, we're showing that good catch and throw by Jeff Mathis. He's thrown out 26% of would-be base stealers this season. Very solid numbers. And then you look at the other side for Boston. This last couple days ago, they've been allowed 150 stolen bases, 166 attempts. That's only. 9% of would-be base dealers are thrown out. The Angels offense predicated around speed. So that's another advantage the Angels will have. If they get on base, attack that right away. Steal bases. It's hard to imagine the Red Sox being able to slow the Angels down at all. You know, Jason Veritek has been a solid catcher for them for a number of years. He's not throwing the ball real well. Victor Martinez, no more for his bat than it would be his throwing arm. So the Angels are going to try to take advantage of that. Three balls, two strikes to Mathis. But you have to get guys on base. If you get on base, pretty much everybody from Mike Sochi will have an opportunity to steal outside of maybe Kendra Morales or Juan Rivera, maybe Vlad. The rest of the guys will be given the green light to try to steal. Mathis rolls a swinging bunt down to third. Base hit. Single for Jeff Number Mathis. Now Reggie Willits, who came in as a pinch runner, will get his first at bat. Reggie looking down at Dino Evil. Is this a spot where Mike Sosha again works on the thing in which Reggie will be used if he's on that playoff roster in a bunt situation? Grant, you're up four nothing. It may not be a bunt spot. It's always a good time to work on certain things that you're going to be used in the postseason. Well, they have the runner going. And they get it. Jeff Math is thrown out there. It's a pretty good play out at second base. He's doing a nice job. He's showed some good range in this game and also ability here now to be able to pick that throw by Powell in the dirt. Not only catch it, but also be able to apply the tag right on the cleat. Of Jeff Mathis as he's sliding into second base. Looked like Reggie was trying to protect his base runner, but that was not an easy pitch to handle. And Reggie now taps one down to first base for the second out of the inning. Two down, and Brandon Wood now will bat for the first time. With two out and nobody on. Certainly has been nice weather for the Angel fans who made the trip up here. Owen one to Woody. A little bit breezy 
today but a very pleasant afternoon. Well, these last two days have been perfect up here. One more game tomorrow afternoon. And Brandon Wood gets a base hit. Woody didn't have a chance to bat until the seventh inning, but he's one for one now. Ryan Buddy gets his first at bat. Good inside out swing for Brandon Wood there to get a base hit. Whoa, then he gets picked off. Well, the Angels gone in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch in Oakland. It's four to nothing Halos. Seven, Mark Ellis, first pitch swinging, pops one up behind the plate. One pitch, one out. Matt Palmer doing a good job in relief. Well, he's definitely earned his spot. His playoff roster has been outstanding in the, as a starter. Very effective. You're in the twos out of the bullpen. The guy that give Mike Sosha some flexibility, some innings out of the bullpen. Between him and Urban Santana, two guys, starters, can give you depth and in innings out of your bullpen. All on one to Jack Cust. No balls, two strikes to the Oakland designated hitter and cleanup hitter. Just off the plate inside. Well, look what Matt Palmer could do with a fastball. He threw a cut fastball off the outside corner, got the corner, then he threw a two seam fastball, starting off inside and just missed hitting the inside corner. That's the thing when you look at Matt Palmer, a guy that can pitch east to west. Starts out the inside part, and then goes back out to the outside corner. Very effective using that fastball. Not overpowering, but spots it well. He's two and two to Cust.
Got him. Pest goes down swinging. Tell you what, that was an excellent sequence of pitches from Matt Palmer. Cutting the fastball, sinking the fastball, and finishes off Cuss with a big 12 to 6 curveball. Nasty. Palmer's gotten five outs, three strikeouts. Landon Powell up there for Oakland. Oh and one. Wow, he came to life. He's got a pretty good rhythm going up there. Trying to get that offense going, but Matt Palmer's not allowing that to happen. Powell rolls one out in front of the plate. Mathis makes a good play, and that's the inning. Jeff calling Palmer off and making a nice play. Classic presented by Brand Affinity Technologies comes up Wednesday, November 11th. It's at the Pelican Hill Golf Club in Newport Beach. You can golf with current and former angels on this beautiful course overlooking the Pacific Ocean. All proceeds benefit the Angels Baseball Foundation. Visit the community section at angelsbaseball.com. New pitcher for the A's, Craig Breslow's in the ball game. Well, he's been in a lot of games, 75 games. Situational lefty. One of those solid performers out of the bullpen for Oakland. Now, if you're a middle of the road as far as payroll club like Oakland, the best way to be competitive and stay competitive is having a solid, deep bullpen. It's way those small market clubs can stay effective. Ryan Buddy was up there when Wood was picked off to end the seventh, so he leads off the eighth. Oh one one to Ryan Buddy. Off the end of the bat, foul, strike two. The Angels have 11 hits today. Oakland has managed only three. And tomorrow, Joe Saunders gets his final tune-up of the season before the playoffs. So should Mike Butcher be able to keep that script they've been having so far up here in Oakland as far as getting some good work from their starters, preparation there, hitting their spots. So far, so good as far as Weaver dealing for five shutout innings, and then Scott Casimir following the same thing. Both right around that mid-70 mark as far as pitch counts. Buddy strikes out. One out in the eighth inning. And the batter will be Chris Pettit. 
Bolger warming up in the Angel bullpen. So it looks like Palmer, unless he pitches tomorrow and doesn't have a good inning, will end up with his ERA under four. 11 and 2 ERA under four. That's pretty impressive. So you come up, you're a 30 year old rookie and not won a major league game till this season. Excellent, excellent year for Matt Palmer. I'll say. <laughs> that is unreal. I mean, he also looked very good on that travel day the other day, dressed up in his rookie gear, in his onesie. Even more comfortable when you are a 30 year old rookie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good look going through cost. I mean through uh, the airport security. He was very happy about it <laughs> One and two to Chris Pettit Drives one in the left center field. He hit that ball well. Davis goes back up against the wall to catch it. Well, Pettit had visions of his first major league home run right there. We well, crushed that baseball, but Davis, oh, so quick getting back, making that leaping catch against the wall. Had a long way to go, too. Nice play by Davis. The center fielder had a read for where the warning track was and knew exactly where the wall was going to be when he leaped up and made the play. Two out, Howie Kendrick. One ball, one strike to Howie. Kendrick's old for three today. Season at Breslow's having for open his batting average against him at 192. So that's 75 games he's been in. Two balls, two strikes to Kendrick. Lions won at shortstop, caught by Pennington. Breslow gets the Angels in order. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning.
Jack in the box, outside the box, Eric Ibar. Having a great season defensively at shortstop. Tried the old drop that line drive to get a double play, but the umpire at second base, Jim Joyce, correctly called. The line drive should have been caught. Didn't make the play after all, but a solid effort in the thought process for Eric Ibar. And that is our jack in the box outside the box. That's what you like out of your shortstop. A heady thinking position. At shortstop, they're going, if I knock it down, I get a double play. Instead of just to getting that one out on that line drive. Bobby Crosby leading off the bottom of the eighth inning for the A's. Hits one foul, first base side. Bolger in the ball game for the Angels. One ball, one strike to Crosby. Half swing. Good curveball by Jason Bolger. He's done a solid job for Mike Sochi down in that bullpen also. Well, I can still reflect on that one time he was brought in a safe situation with the base loader gets Victor Martinez at that point was a member of the Cleveland Indians hitting with a double play. I went a little bit inside to Crosby. But he overthrew that just a tad. <laughs> Fastball was supposed to be on the outside corner of the boot, overthrew it, missed it just a bit inside. That wasn't the outside corner. <laughs> He wants to probably throw him a curveball here on this spot. Missing inside again, runs the count full, three and two. And the breaking ball misses, Crosby. Draws a leadoff walk here in the eighth inning. Now, right fielder, number 25, Matt now Matt Carson, the right fielder, steps in for Oakland. Swinging a miss by Carson. Boy, a young hitter like Carson up there in that spot thinking he's going to get a fastball. He starts that back before the throw is being made by Jason Bolger. Missed that by a lot on that curveball. And same result. So now if you're on the hill, you see a guy swinging at two curveballs off the outside corner. Chances are you got to go back out there with that same exact pitch. A lot of times you outthink yourself on the mound. Think, well, let me show him a fastball first. And that's when you get hurt. It's 0-2 to Carson. Struck him out. Three pitches. Well, if he can't hit it, keep throwing it, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, his curveball at times, Jason Bolger, is devastating. A straight, hard 12 to 6 curveball. He's had a good slider and an excellent changeup along with that 94, 95 mile an hour fastball. Very valuable piece out of the bullpen. One out, Eric Patterson at the plate. When you look at teams that win championships, especially, you know, those teams are pretty equal going into the postseason and those matchups. It's come down to the bullpens that 
teams that win. Last year, the Phillies won the World Series, but Brad Lidge had not blown a save all year. Ryan Matson, the setup guy. The Yankees with Rivera. Going back to the Angels in 2002, you had Percy closing against a Frankie setting him up. It's all about the bullpen depth, and when you get a lead, do not relinquish that lead at any time out of your bullpen. Two and zero to Patterson. Now three and zero. Taking a look down into the Angel bullpen. Brian Fuente says more saves than anybody else in the league. Well, that worked out perfectly last night to get an opportunity to come in in a save situation. Pressure situation to be able to get a save like that. Three and one to Patterson. Three two. I'm sure Patterson was not looking for a curveball 3 1 in that spot. He's had to be looking fastball, and Bulger has the ability to throw that curveball for a strike. Patterson rips one fair right down the right field line, rolling into the corner. Chris Pennant playing right field. Gets to it, but not before the Oakland A's are on the scoreboard, and Patterson has a triple. An RBI triple for Patterson. Oakland scores for the first time today. Time to another curveball. Patterson here, but this time was elevated enough where it was down and in in that spot where you could drop the head of the bat, a left-hander. Patterson turn on that pitch. And a curveball, when you want to throw there to the left hand in that spot, you want to be down or down and away because if it gets the middle part of that play, that's the spot where a lefty can drop the head of the bat and drive it. First career triple for Patterson. Four to one, Angels. Cliff Pennington in an RBI opportunity now. Maybe Patterson's first triple doobie, but he had 11 of them at Sacramento in Triple A ball this year. It's a lot of triples. See how fast he is. There's Kevin Jepson in the Angel bullpen. And then you see that's you know Mike Sosha has identified Jepson, and of course. Bulger a chance both eighth inning guys an important role so many games are won and lost in that eighth inning Everyone just thinks closer, but it's really the eighth inning becomes that important inning in a game And there's a line drive Foul Whoa, just foul off the bat of Pennington, but that didn't miss the chalk by a whole lot. No, it didn't We don't see the A's jumping up and down, but here comes Bob Guerin now he does want a little discussion with the first base umpire, Angel Campos. Boy, that was close. It almost looked like we were watching a replay of Patterson's hit. There's a better angle right here. Oh, boy. boy. <laughs> that was a less than an inch foul. Good call. Especially if you're an angel. <laughs> yeah. That was extremely close. I don't know if we see a little chalk kick up here. Well, even with a replay, that's a tough one to call. Angel Campos is right there. Looks like that was fouled by about an inch. One and two to Pennington, who didn't really react, which makes you think the call was correct. 
And now he goes down swinging. Failing to get that run in from third with less than two outs. Now batting center fielder, number 11, Roger Peebles. Butcher goes out. You know, it's disgusting here at the spot. You got a man on third. You know, you made the quality pitches to get that key out. Now two outs. Keep yourself refocused because that third out is always the toughest when you waste all your energy and be able to get a strike out there. And then all of a sudden you can lose that focus. That's what Mike Butcher is going back out to talk to Bolger about. And facing a pretty tough hitter, the leadoff man, Rajay Davis. Rodriguez getting loose up quickly down to the bullpen for the Halos right now. And Butch taking his time out there on the mound. The ace fans having a good time here at the end of the season. That'd be it. And that Butcher's That'd making injury. The They're taking him out. Sosha comes out to greet Bolger about halfway to the dugout, but he's coming out of the ball game right here. So a pitching change for the Angels. We'll be right back to Oakland. We're back here in Oakland where Jason Bolger has been replaced by Rafael Rodriguez. Did you see anything that might have looked like Bolger was hurting at all? Well, just looking through his mechanics here, he's had had some issue with his fastball, but the curveball has been pretty good, and that was a, a solid one right there. No indication that it was any an issue for him, but clearly Jason didn't want to come out there. Mike Sochi went out and talked with Mike Butcher. Mike Butcher went out right away, sensed it. Now Rodriguez facing Davis, who hits a shot to left field. That one will go off the wall. So the first pitch Rafael Rodriguez throws is whacked off the wall in left field to drive in a run, and it's four to two, Angels. What is the fastball here by Rodriguez? It was up. And you got to work down in the zone. If you're going on the outside part of the plate, you want to be down in the strike zone. RBI double for Rajay Davis. Derek Barton up there now. No, but you see Jason Bolger leave there. We talked about the roster and the way I thought it was going to be set up going with the 10-man staff as far as pitchers. Now, depending on how Jason Bolger responds or why he came out of the game, then you might be forced into a situation where you carry an extra pitcher. Ground ball right to first base. Quinlan still playing. Goes to the bag for the out. Oakland gets two runs in the eighth, cutting the Angels' lead in half.
Casimir with a perfect tune-up today, Gooby. Well, I'll tell you what, his stuff was very good. Great slider throughout this ballgame. Fastball, 92-93, good changeup. Five shutout innings, three strikeouts, only one walk. And his 76 pitches for Scott Casimir. Still concerned now for Mike Sosha now with, with Jason Bolger having to leave the game. Find out, see if we can find out before the end of the ball game exactly why Jason left, but that's may create a spot. Andrew for another Bailey. pitcher. Bailey's in the ball game for Oakland. He's had a great year. And Eric Ibar leading off the top of the ninth inning. That's not the kind of news Bolger wants to hear right now. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. Certainly the curveball looked very good, but his fastball. 92, 91, 92. He's usually around 94, 95, but command of the fastball was not there. Well, he had a few weeks ago a tender throwing arm, but it seemed to be okay. Well, the Angels got Fuentes in in a save situation yesterday. Looks like they're going to do the same thing today. He's warming up again. Brian Fuentes picked up the save yesterday and unless the Angels score at least two runs it'll be a save situation today. Ibar rolls one over to first base and with Bailey covering they get the out. Well we talked about how everything has been going for the Angels is he's prepared to be in position now to play and be strong. Going against the Red Sox, and then you got now a question mark from Mike Sosha. Now, how they react to this spot, it could be a situation where Bolger just must not, might not have been feeling good. But the reality is, when you leave a game like that, especially when your pitching coach comes out and talks to you, and then you're out and walk off the mound like that, you, you there has to be some kind of concern for Mike Sosha. There was a, a small reaction by Bolger after he threw that pitch, but it could be that he's trying to hide that from his manager too. He's been very effective. One and one to Gary Matthews. Bailey with a very good fast. We can throw it at 91 to 96. He cuts his fastball and also his slider. Three balls and a strike to Matthews. Four to two Angels in the top of the ninth inning. Gary had an RBI double back in the fourth inning today. And he grounds one to shortstop. Hennington makes the play. Two down. Fans, place your bid today on autographed retro jerseys worn by Angel players and coaches during the retro nights this year. To place your bid, visit the auction section at angelsbaseball.com. Proceeds benefit the Angels Baseball Foundation. It's like he had the Argyle hat on there he gave away this year. No good giveaways this season the club had for fans coming to the Big A. Rob Quinlan for the Angels. Rob's had a good day with a couple of hits and three RBIs. There's the Argyle hat. 
given away, I don't know, about three or four weeks ago. It's a nice hat. Two balls, two strikes to Quinlan. Full count now to Rob. And he swings and misses strike three. The Angels are out in order in the top of the ninth inning. Ryan Fuentes will be coming in for the bottom half of the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning in Oakland. And the lowercase a from the early 70s on that fan. We gave one of those away this year too, I believe. As we've been showing you, there are quite a few Angel fans who have made the trip up here for this last series of the regular season. And now Brian Fuentes trying to lock up another one. He has 47 saves already. Good opportunity to be able to get some more work in for Brian Fuentes before the postseason. Again, after tomorrow, you have all the way till Thursday before you get a chance to pitch. So most closers like consistent work. Brian getting an opportunity after the save last night. Another save opportunity trying to get save number 48. Mark Ellis leads off the bottom of the ninth. Fastball for a strike to start him. Fuentes hits a fly ball, shallow center field. One out in the ninth. Reggie Willits making the play in center. That wasn't a real easy play with that sun. He got a good jump, but I had to battle that sun all the way in. Did that baseball under the glove? Number eight, Kurt Suzuki. Kurt Suzuki in a pinch hitting role for the A's. Fastball by Fuentes. You can see how hard it is for hitters to pick up a pitch out of that delivery that Fuentes has. Hides the ball very well, short arms it.
two and one to Suzuki, the pinch hitter. And a good pinch hitter. Three and one the count. One day's trying to get the final two outs here. But walks Suzuki. A one out walk to the pinch hitter. Now batting, the catch here. Number 35. Here is Landon Powell. Where the guy that went to get a ground ball can't get a double play to end the ball game to get his 48th save. Scott Kazmir's 10th win of the season. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. And a pop fly around second base. Ibar drifting out. Kendrick is there. Ibar makes the catch. Well, that was right at the 50-yard line for the fair catch for Eric Ibar. Sure was. Now batting third baseman, number seven, Bobby Crosby. So with two out in the bottom of the ninth, he knew exactly where he was at midfield. Bobby Crosby bats for the A's. Crosby with a double on the walk today. Suzuki runs, but Crosby grounds one to Ibar, and that'll do it. Brian Fuentes saves on back-to-back -back days. The Angels win again, just another Halo victory. Great opportunity for Fuentes to get some work in. Save